Hey, good morning. Ben here with Studio on the Lake. There's the phoenix, and that's what we I intended to carve first of off uh, coming out of the fire, and I will still do that. But uh, one of the things I wanted to do was thank everyone, and uh, you notice I do have a cold here. I came back from Iowa a couple days ago with a cold, but so uh, I didn't want to put this up, uh, the fire initially, because I, I didn't want people to feel sorry for me and uh, I didn't want to solicit money, but uh, Jordy and uh, Just Carve Rob put up a, uh, posted my link for Buy Me A Coffee, and I just, I just want to thank everyone. Uh, I, I changed my mind. It was, it was neat uh, to watch uh, what you guys were donating, and I thank you. I can't thank you enough. And when I get back down to Iowa, I, over 100 people uh, contributed and bought me coffee in various amounts from, from $5 to uh, a ridiculous amount. Uh, several people donated $100 and, and a lot of you in between, somewhere in between. So thank you and I will send each of you an email uh, as I pull those out and, and get time. But thank you again and, and all the initial stuff was purchased uh, to start back up again, the cameras, the tripods, uh, various different things with that money. Uh, even though the insurance company uh, has decided that they're going to pay somewhere in the neighborhood of about 50 grand. So I'm going to set up in the uh, Stuga, which is uh, another little guest house we have here. Has a couple bunk beds in there, a double bed that, that, that don't get to see on the other side there. I don't know, it's maybe uh, 12 by 14, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. So how do you get started again? Um, and how do you deal with the, the aftermath well, you, first of all, you got to find a place to carve, and really all you need is a knife, and a knife is uh, what I ended up with uh, initially. You guys, if you're a beginner carver and you're watching this for the first time or coming across the channel, um, there's the studio. It's going to get rebuilt by a contractor because um, we have to work with the mortgage company to get the 50 grand released, and... Uh, I need to go through all of this stuff and then have the building uh, removed. But initially, uh, that's my camera and a tripod that was pulled out. And I filmed with a, a Canon 70D EOS. There's a, a used slash brand new one. I do use a uh, power supply so I don't have to charge batteries. And there's the new power supply. Several boxes have been coming. And there's a new tripod for that thing. I set it up, as some of you know, over my left shoulder and uh, reach up. So in addition to the stuff you don't need if you're just starting carving, uh, this is a light kit. And uh, it has um, two shadow boxes that set in there. And they, I set one up on the left and the right, as well as the overhead lighting. And that's what I've done here. There's your basics, a Ramelson knife or a bench knife, coffee, of course and uh, a pen and pencil so comfortable chair and uh, yep Jordy that is a brand new pillow well new I stole it from inside the house and uh, there you see the other the two light boxes the way that I set those up in the camera sitting in the middle I did have to change that lens out with the lens I borrowed from my daughter that was a zoom lens and it, it was just a little too much zoom uh, for what what we're doing here and once again this is the Stuga which is a Swedish name for a, a small cottage. And I'm, I'm all set and, and ready to go. And uh, here, this is gonna, ha I'm gonna do a little bit of a little gnome guy in here, but uh, initially I wanted to show you some of the some of the stuff. So this is the last carving that you saw. This is the ruddy duck. Uh, he lost his tail, uh, obviously. And uh, he's, uh, the last thing I said when I put him together was I was gonna antique him. Um, this is a hell of a way to antique them. This is one of the original ruddy ducks that managed to survive. Uh, and then here is a um, swan that was sitting out there. And the body is good. The neck is gone in the middle. And uh, his head seemed to make it. So I got some repair work. This is the piece that I was doing the morning that the, uh, um, in the morning on the day the studio burned down. So it was an old man uh, birdhouse because they seem to sell uh, really well. And for some reason, just where he was sitting in the studio or under, the way stuff fell down on him when it burned, uh, he seemed to be all right. Now, Jordy does some stuff he calls Shuki Band. If you look uh, in a lot of the videos over for probably a year now, this loon has been sitting over to the right on top of the trash can, unfinished. And this guy has 
a big thick coating of I don't know had no finish on it whatsoever but it's just nasty and if you've ever been in a fire there's a tool uh, I pulled out that uh, you try to see how far this stuff goes down this this is a good eighth of an inch thick black nasty stinky stuff and if you've never been in a fire I used to think in the old days when people would say well the whole house has fire damage and uh, I didn't quite understand or smoke damage I didn't quite understand what they were talking about but uh, I can tell you and a lot of you know what I'm talking about uh, the smell is atrocious and I, I guess the only way to get rid of it is uh, if you can is uh, baking soda and that sort of thing so here's a fun thing that uh, I pulled that basket I pulled some tools out of the fire and uh, this guy here you've never seen him before he's a Harris Hawk that I did uh, many years ago and he was never uh, painted I just did very there's probably a hundred hours worth of burning in this guy and I did all the feathers and I left him that way because uh, of the unique look if you go back through my videos and you see some of the burning um, you'll notice the, the, the burning and the feathers in itself is kind of a neat looking artistic look so this guy I think is going to be savable um, I'm going to have to obviously go back and and reburn everything he's going to need new feet and uh, I'm not sure about the glass eyes if they made it or not but uh, just to give you an idea of what some of the stuff did and didn't do um, so this guy will get redone I'll probably do a, a video in and of itself on this guy here so uh, a lot of these things I, I reordered some new new stuff I, I already have uh, I did not get uh, my sharpening stuff has not come back in yet so here's the two straps that I normally used and uh, we'll talk about those in a little bit but uh, I just kind of wanted to give you an idea some of these some of the tools are completely burned up others uh, had various degrees of damage and uh, I, I initially thought in the back of my head that I didn't need to worry about temper in these because I, I make knives and, and chisels and that sort of thing and then I do temper them uh, and harden the steel and I, I wouldn't have thought that a fire would be hot enough to mess with the temper in these tools if it didn't burn the handle does that make sense so if the metal got to 16 1800 degrees you would think that the handle the wooden handle would have would have uh, flashed and, and burned up and uh, I found that's not necessarily the case here and it's kind of a, a unique thing to me so that is what's left of my box of glass eyes It's probably three or four hundred dollars worth of glass eyes that were in that box and and what you see there is is what came out of that when you start thinking about it you think about the putty and the uh, uh maybe a file uh, different couple different sets of glue and stuff like that when you start adding up the things that you've got uh, and that's interesting i'll show you that in a little bit that's a swedish Sloyd knife that I thought would make it. So initially, my two power carvers burned up, and I really like them. And you know, I you, you talk about them. And PGL Enterprises doesn't make them anymore. Uh, but I found this one on eBay, just spur of the luck. And uh, this was a single burner, which had the old hand piece, which I like. And so I bought it, and it was like a hundred bucks. It's going to go back. I'm going to put it together and send it back because it was advertised as uh, perfectly fine and it was not it turned out that the uh, power supply had a broken or a bad switch on the back i hot wired around that and then i the handpiece sounds like uh, a grinder going through there it was terrible and the bearings are shot and it's just a mess so i've ordered and it has not come in this uh, ram products i went with an ice cube and uh, initially and then i ordered from uh, pat over at pgl i talked to him and and i got a dual burner and uh, four of the pads that I normally use and those have not come in yet either so what do you need to get back into into carving or to start carving well this is a good way to to talk about that you need a Ramelson knife I ordered what I thought was my uh, old Ramelson bench knife that I like I found out that it's not the same one and to get the one that I like you have to buy this weird combination that one of the viewers had purchased uh, and it's called a carving set of two but you'll notice the tang sticks out on that about uh, a little more than a quarter of an inch and the blade starts a quarter of an inch past the tip of that I, I really don't like that I like the blade to go right back into the wood 
and as you start carving you'll pick up your own uh, different habits but the first thing I always do on a knife is I take the finish off and especially on these Ramelson knives it's slippery it slides around in your hand it looks pretty uh, it's usually a gloss of some sort uh, but to me it, it uh, slips around in my hand I don't like that so the first thing I'm doing is I've got a box cutter there and I'm scraping that finish off and trying to feel how it how it fits in my hand so once I get that all scraped off of there the next thing I do and you'll, you you have to go back and watch some of the, the videos I take the, the other side of that knife and I cut kind of a little concave uh, piece in there and I use that to set the eyes I also use that tip to do a little bit of burnishing if I'm burnishing around a beak or something and that's just something that's unique I don't know where I picked that up um, probably from you know, just using the knife turning around and burnishing and then thinking I needed a different shape on there but when I get a new knife I almost always put this shape in the tip of the knife so there I'm, I've got that kind of where I want it and I'm going to take a, a little bit of sandpaper and finish uh, removing some of that stuff there's that uh, piece I used to set the, uh, the eyes in uh, we're talking about supplies well uh, there were a couple rolls of uh, boxes of rolls of, of sandpaper and various different things that you collect <coughs> um, over the years and that stuff's uh, burned up we used to call those expendables there was one piece of uh, basswood I pulled out from under under stuff and it turned out to be the hardest uh, wood that I could have probably picked up and I, I was tempted several times to go out and get uh, cut another piece I have uh, various other saws. Uh, the bandsaw, of course, is gone, um, but I could have um, got a new piece, and I didn't. I just kind of stuck with that to try to get this first video out. There's uh, what's left of. I couldn't find my diamond slicks. I usually use a diamond slick when I'm honing them, and I found out uh, this Ramelson when I bought the other one two or three years ago, and a couple Ramelsons I bought since then. They came right out of the package, sharp and ready to use and I didn't have to do any profiling on the blade and I didn't have to do uh, any sharpening other than just a little bit of stropping well I use Tripoli and Rouge on these and that's the Rouge is the red and uh, I can tell you that Rouge all burned up the, the, the bulk but for some reason these two slicks were partially saved and uh, once that Rouge gets hot it is not quite as good but it was all I had because I haven't got the replacement stuff uh, in yet. It's been ordered. So this knife was not, not sharp enough to do what I needed it to do and it didn't have a good profile on it, which was a little bit disappointing because if the one thing you need as a beginner uh, if you're starting to carve is a knife that works. And uh, this is, is cutting, but it's got a little bit of uh, resistance to it. Hey, I, I got the owl eyes in. Uh, and here's a book, and I think uh, Jordy has a picture of this book with a character that he does chainsaw carving with. I have the same reference book. Uh, interesting how most of us, and I was going to do a horned owl, and the eyes came in. Uh, they were ordered long before the fire, and they came in the other day. Uh, so I'm behind the power curve. Uh, a lot of you will remember when I set eyes, uh, this is the little knife I set eyes with, and it, it took some damage on the, uh, it's a knife I made many years ago on the handle. But when I was having trouble with that, that uh, Ramelson in my right hand there not being sharp, I decided to try and see if this knife still had uh, some bite to it because there's nothing worse than uh, having a knife that's not cutting the way you want. In fact, it, it, a, a little bit duller or one that's not doing the cuts you want is, is a safety factor, and, and that's where a glove would probably come in. So I'm just trying to take a little charcoal off this one and see if it would do uh, what I wanted to do to finish that little gnome that I was starting on and then I found out that, that this one had lost a little bit of its edge also and I was working with two slip or two slip stones or uh, uh, sharpening stones and then trying to work with those, the terrible uh, burned up slick with the rouge on them and I, I think that those two leathers will get cleaned up in, in a new batch of rouge and they'll be fine but my challenge was, uh, you can see that that had a little bit of damage on it. I eventually cleaned that up uh, a little bit more. And I spent about an hour on um, the Ramelson knife reshaping the, 
the cutting portion of that and, and I came out with something that was acceptable and you'll see uh, here in a few minutes uh, what I did with that knife working on that that gnome guy so this is kind of a challenge I, I, beginner if you need, you need a knife that'll work and you need something to sharpen that knife with so your first investment would be uh, a sharpening system I obviously uh, I talked about the diamonds I would go with diamonds a diamond plate even though they're most the most expensive they seem to last the longest and then I would get something a leather strop and you can pick any kind of uh, any of the grits that they use they use a white um, different kinds of powders and sharpening powders but uh, I'm old-fashioned I, I use Rouge and Tripoli because they're readily available and they seem to do the trick and once you get a knife sharp uh, Doug Linker talks about it then you can you can just strop that uh, forever once your profile is good and then occasionally you have to maybe do a little bit of edge work on it so I got it semi sharp and still not a hundred percent happy with it and uh, they could use a little a little bit more so as always center lines and this is just a rough uh, and you'll see it real is really rough gnome I just wanted to kind of get back in and say that I was carving once again and get something out uh, to those of you that, that, that are subscribed to the channel and watch and uh, I'm working really hard with this knife uh, two reasons one the wood is pretty hard the second and that's kind of neat uh, the one that really removed some wood even though it took a lot of pressure was that uh, burned up uh, exposed sloyd knife I know one of my challenges in the future is going to be to uh, uh, not talk about the fire and uh, I'll, I'm going to do my best here shortly to not do that. That's like I've had friends that uh, were divorced or, or had something stolen, uh, their house was robbed and their things were stolen and 15 or 20 years later they're still talking about well you know that, uh, that got stolen. Well I don't want to do that, I don't want to say well that's a result of the fire so like like all things in life things change and uh, you could correct me later in the future if you remember this and a lot of you guys do it's amazing that you remember all the garbage that I say but uh, if you hear me in the future saying something about the fire or whining and pissing and mooning uh, feel free to leave me a comment and say hey man you said you weren't gonna do that and and that was not my intention but again, thank, thank you for everyone who sent all that, uh, that stuff that was not necessary. Um, I'm not rich, but I'm not poor either. And the uh, insurance company looks like they're going to take good care of us. Uh, within a week, I, I got a check for half of the 50 grand. And I just have to get the builders coordinated and the zoning coordinated to put that, uh, put a, the newer, bigger batter studio together. And I said it before, uh, that's a heck of a way to, uh, to clean your studio out. Uh, so we were, we were getting to the point where a long winter of carving had uh, lots of combustible chips and stuff in there and uh, sawdust and that sort of thing. And you could see the frustration. Uh, this is before I, I went ahead and spent an hour on these knives off camera and getting them to where they were acceptable carving but not perfect. Um, and it's just, just interesting to me uh, that that poor thing. You could I found those uh, that same strop uh, somewhere online, and it's really uh, obscure and hard to find. But it, it does have the stuff in there for the chisels. Now this is kind of interesting. While I was flipping through these, this, this is a Ramelson uh, chip carving knife with a really strange blade design on it. And ironically enough, it was cutting pretty nice. Although it had has weird geometry, if you're you're gonna do hand carving, and, and I I left this part in, and the reason I did is you're gonna watch what happens to the tip of that here in a second. I I wouldn't have thought that a fire would take the temper out of um, these blades, and, and and in reality it really did. A lot of the chisels I'm I'm gonna be fine with the ones that, that I can find, uh, it, but I, I am gonna have to set the torch up and get some oil and, and re-temper all of those in addition to putting uh, new handles on each and every one of them so this guy was I was, I was working on a, the nose I was just gonna put a simple nose no eyes 
and then kind of a cowl sticking over it. I was having trouble getting something sharp enough to cut against that hard grain. And so I switched back to that, uh, that Ramelson chip knife with the tip. And, and this is kind of neat. You see how much pressure I'm putting on that? That's really not safe. And that's why you need to get a real sharp knife. And a sharp knife is so much safer than a dull knife. Uh, but here I'm going through and I'm, I'm doing what they call a stab cut in there. And then all of a sudden the tip bent over. Is that ridiculous or what? So uh, I, I left that part in to show you the damage on that. That, that knife is probably ruined. Uh, I, I'll, I may reshape that into the blade into another. But you see it just had a little distemper color on the end. It was enough to take the temper of it and let that tip bend over. So I guess a fire is not good for um, knives and, and holding temper and that sort of thing. But at, at this point here, I had spent some about an hour on that Ramelson bench knife, and I, I got it to where it was it was it was doing pretty much what it should do, although um, not quite up to what would be my standard on a on a knife. Once you get an, a good knife that you like, it fits in your hand. Uh, you get it just a razor sharp and a little bit of honing takes care of it from there on out you'll, you'll always pick that knife up um, if you go way back in the channel and where I talk about tools I could probably buy two of these knives uh, identical at the same time I could buy two chisels that are identical and one of them I will like better than the other and I don't know the reason for that just a slight geometry change in the manufacturing process uh, maybe a little bit of an anomaly when they hardened it but uh, one of those two identical twin tools uh, will work better than the other so uh, I'm not saying that you should probably buy two two different uh, two identical tools and then use the one that you uh, like the best um, but uh, that certainly seems to be the case and that's kind of interesting but I wanted to show you a little bit the, the goal of this was not having the power carving and not using the chisels, uh, just simply using a knife that you can actually come out with a, a semi-acceptable carving. Uh, all the basswood is fine. It was, it's in different storage sheds and, and some of it's out at the, at, at the woodlot. Uh, and we just now, the, the ice is off the lake the loons are back and uh, doing their thing. And you can see I've got the, the setup there, uh, the basic setup where I can go ahead and film again. I will film uh, the, the studio once we start uh, destroying it and then uh, pouring a foundation and uh, putting that back. And, and like I said, the insurance company since I have to work with them I'm not going to be building that myself and and that's kind of a mixed blessing I, I didn't really want to commit the time to doing the construction I'm capable of doing that but it's it's a lot more fun to act as a general contractor and watch um, other younger folks do that so um, I just want to thank everybody for everything they donated this is as far as I took this guy I put his hands behind his back. Uh, you can do this with a knife, just a knife. And I'll probably do another carving before I go down uh, to Iowa next week. But uh, once again, hey, thanks for all the support, you guys. Uh, it looks like I'm back. And this has been Ben with Studio on the Lake.